what you need to do if you're going to trim a pot. Now this one, obviously, I don't need to trim that much because I did a pretty good job of cutting the excess clay off when, before I took it off. And it's, you know, it's just a cylinder. It doesn't really need a fancy foot on it. Uh, ideally, you're trimming only to shape the bottom and not to get weight off of it. But the reality is that most you're going to have more weight at the bottom of your pots right now, so you, you're going to want to trim a little bit. You don't want to trim much more than about a fourth of the way up the side of the pot. It's going to be upside down, but you wouldn't want to trim all the way to the, the top edge because that's, that's too much trimming. Uh, if I were not going to trim this, if I was not going to trim this, I would just take my thumb, it's called thumb polishing, and I would just just run it along that edge so it's just not sharp. You know, so it's just a little bit smoothed off. And that's a lot of, especially a lot of production potters, that's all they do. It's all they have time to do. So uh, that's perfectly fine to finish it that way. Um, but if I want to trim a little bit more than that, then I need to invert my pot. It needs to be a good firm letter hard. This is just about right. Come up and feel it later so you can see how, uh, it's a good firm letter hard so I can't easily change the shape of the pot by squeezing on it. If you try and trim with a clay wetter than that, it's going to cause big, big problems. And if it's much drier than that, that'll cause big problems too. So you want it right about that, that thing. And then you want to get it in center. What I do is something called tap centering. I believe it is the only way to get it in center really well. Although you will see other people doing it different ways. But this is, you want to practice this. And it does take practice. It's well, just like that wedging thing. I, you just keep practicing it. Um, I used to make my students in high school do it for like a whole class period. Nothing else but cap centering. And by the end of the class period, they could do it. So it, really, if you just take an hour one day and just take a pot that you don't care that much about and just keep whacking on it and practicing it, you will figure out how to do it. So you set the pot on the wheel upside down, off center. You want to set it off center pretty dramatically so you can really easily see which side is off center. So that since the wheel is spinning around at a regular rate, this side that, that's coming close to me is coming to me at a regular rate. If you're a musician, it's a very steady beat. Somebody pointed out to me that not everybody are musicians, but but it, it's a good way to think of it, that it's just one, you know, it's just a really steady beat. And I always take a few practice taps. I'm just touching my pot, but I'm trying to touch it on the side as it comes closest to me. All right, and then once I get pretty confident, I'm just gonna start pushing it with this part of my hand. I almost always have my other hand out here though, because if I miss hit it and it goes flying, that's where it's gonna go. It's gonna bump right into that edge. So I hold this hand out like that, but I'm just, I'm just tapping it gently. I'm not really tapping it with my fingers, although sometimes I do, but with this pot, because it's a fairly big pot, I'm just tapping it with the side of my hand. And I'm looking, I'm centering this part, not this part. Because this could be a little out of center. Or it could be a little, I might have ovaled it. Or there are a lot of reasons why that might not work. But it doesn't matter, because I'm not trimming down there. I'm trimming up here. So that's, that's the thing that I want to have in center. And that's pretty close. If I hold my finger in one place steadily, you know, it's, it's, it's staying pretty much the same distance away from my finger. All right. The next thing I'm going to do is invert a jar lid on the bottom of my pot. You don't have to do this. There are plenty of people who take big, big wads of clay and stick their pots down with wads of clay. Um, I don't like to do that for a few reasons. One is that if your pot is at all wet, you can distort the shape of your pot by pushing wads of clay. Do you know what I mean? No, I'm going to show you. You can do it this way. And I actually do do it this way sometimes when I have sort of complicated things to trim. I'm talking about taking a, a round wad of clay and then just pushing it down like that. And if I do that in three places, that will hold the pot pretty well. Uh, but like I said, I don't like to do that partly because it can distort the rim of your pot and also because as I'm trimming, I like to be able to pick the pot up and hold it and look at it and, and then turn it back upside down, recenter it, trim some more. And if it's stuck down with clay, you just don't want it to go through all that. And if you don't know how to tap center. So that's why you got to do both those things. So the jar lid works to let me push down on the pot to hold it in place while I'm trimming. I'm trimming over here on the right side of the clay, you know, and it's, that's going to be pulling it sideways, that, that trimming action. So this pushing it down on the jar lid is counteracting 
the pulling of the tool. If I don't push down on it, if my fingers are just writing on it, it's not going to do me any good at all. And the reason I use a jar lid is if I push down right here, and if my pot was a little bit thin, I could just poke right through the bottom of the pot. But this will distribute the pressure in a wider area. So I try and get a, um, a jar lid that's just a little smaller than the pot. Um, and then I get a trimming tool. Uh, depending on what I'm doing, I use a rounded tool for sort of, and flat tool for bigger things, and a little narrow one for, for more delicate things. I'll demonstrate later on. So I'm pushing down on the jar lid. My right hand is holding the tool. My left hand is touching my right hand. Remember, I'm left-handed. But I'm, I'm actually doing all the guiding with my left thumb. The right hand is just holding on to the tool. So it works pretty fine. But I'm doing that because I'm working on the right side of the clay. Uh, you guys might want to move over there so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, but I'm just, I'm going to take a little bit off the side. I don't really have to, but I've got a little bit of weight here. I wouldn't mind getting rid of. So I'm just, I'm just taking a little off the side. You can tell that this is the perfect stage for trimming because the trimmings are coming off like this. In coils, they're not sticking to my, my tool, and they're not coming off in little tiny crumbles. So that is a good uh, indicator that I'm taking, the, I'm, I'm doing it at the right stage. When I do this, my fingers are really pushing down hard. If they weren't so dirty, you'd see them turning white with pressure because I'm really pushing down hard. And some of the jar lids will actually get this crazy squeaking sound that sounds vaguely improper. But <laughs> but uh, but that that you know you're pushing down hard enough when you get in that. And after I usually I usually just sort of take the weight off first, so I'm not really worried about how pretty it looks. And then I'm going to take either my flexible scraper or the straight side of this tool. The, the flexible scraper is usually a little sharper because these tools get a little dull. So, uh, and I want something that's pretty sharp. So I can, I can smooth that out. Again, it's just a cylinder, so I don't have to be too fussy with it. But I'm trying to look at the profile and make sure I don't have a gouge showing on it. Do that now. Um, and then I can take my flexible scraper and just do some fine tuning by running that edge along the side. You can see I'm getting a little bit of clay off, and all it's doing is just smoothing it out a little bit so I don't have any trimming gouges on my pot. And then the last thing I'm going to do. And again, I, I don't necessarily do all of these every time, but they're all in the, in the bag of tricks that you might be able to use. But I can take my just damp sponge, and here, let me stop it right now. You can sort of see where I've been carving, because I've got drag marks from, the, marks from the grog in the clay about that far. So if I take my sponge, <clears throat> and again, I, I push against it kind of firmly, a damp sponge, I can get rid of some of those drag marks. It's really not that critical if you're going to glaze over that. It's not, in most, in most glazes, it's not going to show that much. I'm a little fanatical about that because with the myolica glaze that I use at low temperatures, those drag marks really do show. So I try to get rid of them a little more than some people might. And then on the bottom here, I could trim it at a little bit of an angle like I first had it. Um, and polish that off a little bit too so I don't have a, a really sharp edge. Uh, pay, pay close attention, in other words, to the bottom. It's just the bottom, but the bottom should be as pretty as the rest of the pot. So I, you know, if I've got some, if I've got some, uh, you know, some scrapey marks or I don't know, whatever. If I, you know, if I trimmed it a little funny or I've got some fingerprints and stuff, I just, I just take a little bit of time and polish that nice and neatly. I don't like that. Um, and that's really all you need to do. That's certainly all you need to do for the cylinders that you're doing. When we get to more complex forms, I'll show you how to trim a foot into a pot, but we're, you don't need to have a separate foot right now. The last thing you probably want to do is go back to the top edge and, and clean it up. If it got a little flattened by the wheel or this got a little out of, out of round, probably when I push that ball of clay up next to it. So I'm just going to polish it off a little bit and make it round and pretty again.
and then it's ready to be put in the uh, in the kiln room to be visfired. Be sure you put your name on it, and if you can, whatever you can, leave your pot upside down to dry. It'll dry much more evenly uh, because the bottom there's more clay here, and there's you know so the top edge will dry. Sometimes you can get cracking or warping if you if you let it dry right side up. You can't always fix that, but if you can, also be careful where you set it down. I just set it down on a little little bit of junky clay, and it got stuck to the bottom, and it made the bottom look not as pretty. So you want to be sure that you pay some attention to where you set it down, and make sure the bottom is as finished as everything else. Any questions? Okay, that's it. Thank you, Dave.